another type of training that might be important for neuroplasticity is uh, strength training. We know that weakness after stroke is common, and we know in people without stroke, if you want to build strength, you do strength training. So could that be an effective uh, approach for people post-stroke? Well, one of the things that we think about is, you know, strength comes from, strength training comes often from the hypertrophy in the muscles. However, people improve in strength before the hypertrophy happens. You have to actually engage in strength training for about six weeks before you see muscle hypertrophy, yet we see changes in strength as early as four weeks after strength training. And people have argued that that's actually a neural component and a, and a learning of coordination. So maybe strength training would be helpful after stroke. So there's one study that's looked at that in rats, and they had a very unique design because you can't exactly put rats in a gym and ask them to do strength training. They don't participate in that very well, but they love pasta. And so Rempel and his colleagues developed the, the uh, pasta task for animals where he suspended increasing numbers of, of pasta bundles um, from a, a device, and the rat had to reach in, grab the pasta, break it off, and then could eat it. And so it's kind of like the telephone book. If you have a single strand of pasta, that's not very strong, like a single piece of paper, and you can tear the piece of paper. However, try tele tearing a telephone book. Well, if I bundle the pieces of pasta together, I end up with a telephone book kind of uh, piece of pasta. And so when you look at the graph, you'll see that the, the rats actually learned to break off larger and larger bundles of pasta, so they were building strength. But let's look at what happens in their brains. So again, we're seeing um, micro uh, intracortical stimulation maps of the forelimb area of the cortex. Again, green is distal, uh, blue is the proximal arm. And what you see is um, the animal, the graph on the left is the graph where there's no training whatsoever. And the two graphs on the right are the pasta task graphs. The middle graph is the one in which animals just continue to reach for single strands of pasta. The one on the far right is the one where they're reaching for these increasing size bundles of pasta. So what you see is in both pasta groups, you'll see that there is an increased percentage of the green, which represents distal, um, the distal part of the hand in these animals, has increased. And so they have learned this skill, there's some neuroplasticity. However, there's no difference in their motor maps between the animals that got the single strands of pasta and the animals that, that got the increased bundle size. And so what this indicates is that learning the reaching um, task, the, the pasta breaking off task, resulted in neuroplasticity. But the strengthening component of the increased bundle sizes had resulted in no change in their cortical maps, no neuroplasticity.